Good morning, Bethel. Sometimes things go according to plan and it works out well, and sometimes we just have some technical difficulties that get in the way. So um, in lieu of our regular worship service this morning, I just want to take a moment to um, have a time together to share some announcements and then to share a brief message, um, and then we will um, carry on again next week. Um, we will not have any meetings um, in person this week. Bible study will be done via Zoom, so we hope that you can join us um, and that everything is worked out by then as we gather. Um, there's also a fish fry um, this week at the Echo Fire and Rescue. Uh, it will be um, Saturday, July the 11th from 4 to 7 p.m. Um, they'll have fish plates for sale for $10. It's carryout only. You can't eat there. Um, it's a full plate, though, with um, fried catfish slaw, fries, hush puppies, and cakes, so we hope that you can um, come and support them. They also have um, a raffle as well, and there are many um, really good um, prizes, and they're $20. Pam said you could get those at the hardware store as well if you're looking for them, so we hope that you will support Echo Fire and Rescue this coming Saturday, July 11th from 4 to 7. Um, let us pray together this morning as we gather. Lord, we are thankful for um, the many things that we celebrate this week, especially the freedom that you have given to us and to our nation. Lord, we ask that you would help us use that freedom wisely. Um, and Lord, in a way that we would share with one another um, and that we would seek freedom for all. Lord, we just ask that you would be with our nation at this time. Um, Lord, with the difficulties that we are having with one another. Lord, with all the things that we are dealing with, with coronavirus. We just ask, Lord, that your um, peace would come to us, Lord, and that we might celebrate um, the freedom that you have given to us this week. And we ask this all in Christ's holy name. Amen. I want to share um, some prayer requests with you as well. Um, one is that Ken Weathers, as you know, had tested positive for COVID-19. And we are um, afraid that Wendy also might have it. She's not feeling well. And while Ken is feeling better and on the mend, um, she uh, at once t tested negative. And we're afraid that that might um have come back to be a positive as well. Uh, we also received word this morning that C Steve Sutton has passed away. Um, he'd had some health issues and had been with us and had moved um, back to Florida, but we want to lift up the family of Steve Sutton um, as well. So as we um, will pray for those as we close this morning, um, for every holiday and occasion that we celebrated at my grandparents' house on my dad's side, and I know I've shared this before, um, we had a certain tradition, right? It was almost sort of like a litany that you would have when you go to church and the liturgy that you would follow. And it would be sort of the same form every time. After everyone had gathered and before it was time to eat, we would um, all join in the front room and my grandmother would have one person share a brief history of whatever the holiday or occasion was. She would ask someone else in the family or sometimes herself to read a scripture that she had picked out that she felt was appropriate for the occasion. And then she would pray. Um, and then we would be able to eat together and, of course, have cake. So there were always these things, right? The history of the event, um, a particular scripture, a prayer, and then, of course, cake that would follow. This weekend, we have all celebrated, and some, I'm sure, are still celebrating today, the 4th of July. We've done it by spending time with family and friends. We have gone to the lake, some of us, or the beach. Maybe we have um, had a quiet evening or day at home, quite different from most years before. Um, in the 4th of July, or maybe you were one of the few who had to work this past holiday. But for almost what seems like 250 years, we have celebrated the 4th of July as the beginning of our nation's independence from England, and then of course our freedom to pursue our own way of governing. So in that same spirit of my grandmother, having recapped what we celebrate this weekend, I'd like to share a passage with you, and it comes from 1 Peter chapter 2. It says, Beloved, I urge you as aliens and exiles to abstain from the desires of the flesh that wage war against the soul. Conduct yourselves honorably among the Gentiles, so that though they may malign you as evildoers, they may see your honorable deeds and glorify God when he comes to judge. For the Lord's sake, accept the authority of every human institution, whether of the emperor as supreme or of governors or sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to praise those who do right, for it is God's will that by doing right, you should silence the ignorance of the foolish. As servants of God, live as free people, yet do not use your freedom as a pretext for evil. Honor everyone, love the family of believers, fear God, and honor the emperor. 
The truth is, is that we will always be subject to some kind of earthly powers in this world, some form of government, government or another. Now, the political world of the early church was much different than the one that most of us live in these days, especially here in this time and place. Many members of the early church would not have the same political advantages that you and I have. It just would have been in a very different world, and they would have had different standings and different powers and different um, privileges as well. But in this letter of First Peter that's attributed to the Apostle Peter, we are reminded that as members of Christ's church, we have been given a certain kind of freedom. That freedom is both from something, we have been freed from something, and we have been freed for the purpose of something as well. Right? We have freedom from sin and death and from the consequences which we deserve through God's grace and mercy and Christ conquering over the grave. But we also have been in freedom for the sake of something, and that is of the gospel. This freedom which Christ has granted to us and given to us and um, won on our behalf is one that we receive not to then go and do whatever we please, free of any consequences, but we go out to live our lives for the sake of the gospel, not to do things on our own pretext. Peter implores us here to use our freedom from the, for the sake of Christ. Not to say, I don't need to listen to you, but rather to show the love of Christ to those around us. We are called as those who have been set free to once again make ourselves servants, this time of God. We are called to make ourselves those who put ourselves under the authority of God. And Peter says here to honor everyone, to not see ourselves as better than anyone else, whether they are inside the church or outside. To love the family of believers, so to seek peace and seek to live with those who are part of the body of Christ and of the church. To fear God, to heed and understand the teachings of Christ, and even to respect the governments around us. Not to say, well, I am of Christ and have freedom in him, and so I do not need to listen to anything else, but rather to use our position in that freedom to say, I have freedom in Christ, but for the sake of others, I choose to live in peace with you as well. I choose to live under the authority um, and to use my position as one that gives a good and favorable impression of the kingdom of God. It says we are to use our freedom for the sake of the gospel and not, as this passage says, as a pretext for evil, for our own desires and selfish will. I hope that you find time this weekend, if you've not already, um, to celebrate the freedoms that we have in our country but I also hope that you take time to celebrate the freedom that we have in Christ, to give thanks for what has been sacrificed for us in that, and then to choose to follow Christ and to be a witness to the great joy and good news that we each have found in God. I also hope that you find time to eat food and, of course, to have cake. And as we close this morning, let us pray together once again. God, we do give thanks this day for all that you have given to us. Lord, for the things that we are privileged to have because of where we are born, but also, Lord, for the privileges that we have because we have been born again through um, Christ's death and resurrection. Lord, we do lift up Ken Weathers and Wendy. Lord, we lift up others who have fallen um, prey to the coronavirus, that they would be healed quickly. And Lord, we do lift up the family of Steve Sutton, asking that you would give them healing um, and that you might bring, give them peace and bring about some good in the midst of their tragedy and loss. Lord, we ask that you might bring us back together safely um, to study your scripture on Bible study this Wednesday night through Zoom. And we ask that you would be with us this week, that we might go out and use the freedom that has been given to us for your good and for your kingdom. And we ask this all in Christ's holy name. Amen. Thank you for joining us and for um, staying with us for these um, technical difficulties. And we hope to see you again soon. Have a great week.